especially given the political ding dong in the first hour about the the chancellor, I'm, I'm finding myself in an unusual position now. I think of potentially having to defend the prime minister from uh, LBC listeners. I was listening to Nick Ferrari's program on the way into into the studio this morning, and I was surprised actually by the number of people who were calling in criticising Boris Johnson for his visit to Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, and and the images of the Prime Minister walking through the streets of the city um, with the President of Ukraine. Look, personally, I, I, th- I thought it was an important visit. I thought it was an important visible show of solidarity. Um, it followed the visit uh, of Ursula von der Leyen, the President of the European Union. And if I'm honest, when I looked at some of the, the social media uh, commentary over the weekend, uh, I saw some of the people who were cheering the President of the EU visiting um, then turning on the British Prime Minister and having a go say it was all a photo op. And I'd say, look, you can't have it both ways, folks. Um, If you thought it was important for the President of the EU to visit, you surely must think it was important for the the Prime Minister to visit. And and actually, uh, I think one of the things that has made me proud of our country and its response to Ukraine has been the overwhelming unity we've seen. We've seen unity in the House of Commons, um, unity in terms of actions taken, whether on sanctions, arms to Ukraine, uh, particular, particularly strong cross-party support there. The display of unanimity in the House of Commons during that historic address of President Zelensky when he uh, addressed members of the House of Commons in the in the chamber via video link, and there was that moment, that huge, uh, unprecedented standing ovation. Uh, and applause for Zelensky, such is the level of, of cross-party support for uh, for Ukraine and their um, efforts to repel the Russian invasion. And, and that unity, I think, reflects the, the, the views in the country as well. We've seen um, huge numbers of people not just opening their hearts to the people of Ukraine, but offering to open their doors to take in refugees fleeing their homes and their country, fleeing for their lives uh, and, and, and looking to... Uh, safety in in Western Europe and and the UK. Uh, in fact, um, I, whether it's um, people calling into LBC or when I was on Question Time a few weeks ago, if anything, the public have been asking us to go further. We need to be doing more. We need to be doing more uh, in terms of protecting Ukraine airspace, more on refugees, more on arms. So uh, there is a huge amount of support and unanimity a- across the public. And, and that's made me proud because I think uh, the, the the fight that Ukraine is undertaking isn't just a battle for their freedom, their democracy, their self-determination, things that we value uh, as British people. It is a fight for the, the West. And, and if we don't stop Putin now, how much further can we go? And- 